So, hey, uh, I'm Frederick. Uh, yes, I used to work at CoreOS until we got acquired earlier this year. If you want to ask, yes, it's great. Reddit, Reddit is a great company to work for. Um, all my team is still there, so there's that. Um, yeah, so uh, what do we want to talk about uh, today? So um, the Coop RBAC proxy is something that I started putting together at KubeCon in Austin last year. Um, and uh, I was talking to a couple of uh, now colleagues um, uh, about this and they said, ah, this is really cool. And then I ended up giving basically this talk as a lightning talk at KubeCon Copenhagen um, where I really pushed together 15 minutes of content into five minutes. So today we'll hear the non full speed um, version of that. Um, so really what, what did we want to, uh, or what did I want to solve with this uh, problem? So I work on Prometheus um, and also on Kubernetes things. Um, and a really common thing that we have is that we want to protect uh, metrics endpoints um, that Prometheus scrapes from exporters or various metric sources, right? Um, so that only Prometheus can actually see this data. Um, and it turns out that Kubernetes already has some mechanisms for this um, that Prometheus already has to be configured for in order for Prometheus to, for example, collect metrics from the API server or from the kubelet. Um, so this is really a recurring theme. And if we are already running within Kubernetes, why not reuse uh, this mechanism that already exists? Um, but before I jump into some of the details, I just want to give a very quick primer on, on RBAC. So RBAC stands for uh, role-based role access control. And really what that means is that we um, declaratively, like everything in Kubernetes, define a role. So a generic thing that when someone has this role, this is the things that um, that entity can do. So in this example, um, I uh, have some, some, <coughs> some name in there um, and I specify an API group and I say within that API group, which resources can I access? And if I leave the API group empty because of legacy Kubernetes things, that's the core API. So pods, uh, replication controllers, services, and all those things and I can only uh, get and list them. And I actually didn't properly update that name because it was supposed to be the view role. Um, and uh, then there's a role binding that actually binds the role to, to an entity. So in this case, I uh, bind it to a service account. And a service account is really, as the name really says, is an account that is supposed to be used by a machine uh, entity. And uh, there, is, there are also users and groups. Um, but in this case, I just used a service account. So um, now that we kind of understand um, how RBAC works and what our problem set is, um, let's have a quick look at how Kubernetes already does this without the Prometheus part. So um, there are two, two things involved um, with, with RBAC. Um, or really, RBAC is only the authorization part. But in order for us to be able to perform authorization, we need authentication because um, otherwise, I could just say, I am a cluster admin, um, and a cluster admin obviously has rights to do whatever. Um, but we want to make sure that Prometheus only has the access that Prometheus is supposed to have. So there are really a couple of things, and uh, the RBAC proxy today implement, implements three authentication mechanisms. These are basically taken exactly from the Kubernetes API server, because it has nice modules and they're reusable. Um, and those are client certificate authentication, so just normal MTLS, um, as uh, Michael already demonstrated, um, for the uh, when components within Kubernetes are supposed to uh, authenticate against each other, that's a good choice um, to use. But there are also service account, um, and the nice thing about service account, um, or more specifically the service account token that is issued for a service account is that uh, there are already um, rotation mechanisms, which is, if you've managed infrastructure, that's kind of, a, kind of a nice thing to have when there's rotation already in place. In case you wonder, the way you rotate a service account token in Kubernetes is by just deleting the secret that contains the ser service account token. Then Kubernetes will just create a new uh, secret and it's rotated. 
And um, another one, which was actually just merged like last week and uh, released yesterday, no connection whatsoever to this meetup. Um, we uh, actually needed this, um, this feature, so uh, there you go. Um, and then authorization actually happens, that's the real feature that was implemented here. Um, so there's a, a more complicated flow um, that, it, that uses what's called the subject access review API in Kubernetes. So how does that like, work in detail? So I really taken the example of Prometheus accessing an exporter that is called um, kube state metrics in this case, um, which is also a com component I maintain. Um, basically, kube state metrics exposes metrics about Kubernetes objects. So, for example, Kubernetes has the deployment object, right? So, um, and what kube state metrics does is it takes the expected number of replicas and the um, actually available number of replicas. Um, that's all in the Kubernetes um, object, right? And it converts that into metrics. And that's really powerful because we can then take those metrics and alert on them when the number of available replicas are not what we expect, right? But this is also super sensitive information because it most likely contains names or stuff like that from our workload. So we wanna make sure that that's protected. Um, and so that's why we wanna put the kubrbac proxy in front of that because Kube state metrics itself knows nothing about authentication and authorization, but Kube proxy can do that generically. So when we've set up all of this, this is really the flow that everything goes through. So Prometheus has a service account token um, that it has some role bound to, that it is allowed to access um, any URL that is just slash metrics. Um, and Prometheus does the request and the Kube RBAC proxy and the Kube state metrics um, processes are both in a single container, uh, in a single pod, two containers, and the entry point is the Kube RBAC proxy. Um, and at that point, the Kube RBAC proxy only validates that the token is actually a real token, right? And it uses what's called the token review API for this. So it takes the token that Prometheus gave, gave it, the actual plain text token and gives it to the Kubernetes API. And the Kubernetes API then verifies that and returns the user information. So in this case, it would be a service account token. So it says this is the service account token and you do whatever you want with that. Um, and then the critical piece happens, which is it takes this user information and says, is this entity allowed to access this uh, particular path? Um, and it again does a request against the Kubernetes API, which um, verifies that and then again returns the result for that. And obviously, whenever anything fails at, uh, in this process, um, the kubrbac proxy returns with, an, with the appropriate error. But if all of this succeeds, it will just proxy the request to kube state metrics and that will return the actual metrics to Prometheus. So really, not all that complicated because Kubernetes already exposes all of these APIs. So what can this really look like? Um, so there are a couple of scenarios where this could even be interesting for like internal services or something. Um, but there's some disclaimer, uh, so don't get too excited uh, right away. I'll uh, demonstrate why there are also some issues maybe around this. Um, but in general, there's, uh, there are a lot of cool possibilities to at least secure things that are really tight to the cluster, um, and I'll get to why. Um, but something that we can, for example, do is that we can say user X can proxy um, to service Y, right? Um, and that's pretty cool because suddenly I can give Michael access uh, to access the Prometheus front end. Um, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, but um, you, you, see, you see where I'm going with this. Um, and this is really a super simple configuration file where you just say um, on any given request, this is the subject access review that I wanna do. So in this case, I would check that um, any request that I'm receiving is validated that the requesting entity has a role bound to it that can use the proxy sub resource on 
the service named Prometheus in the default namespace. Whew, that's a mouthful. Um, yeah, so this is really cool if you want to um, use the normal RBAC roles where you actually specify um, objects in Kubernetes, but it can also be used for just something that's called non-resource URLs. In, um, and this is what we typically, in Prometheus world, use this to protect the metrics endpoint. But there was also a really cool contribution that was done by someone from the community against the Kube RBAC proxy where they added um, transparent HTTP2 support because what you could suddenly then do is use this for gRPC services and protect, for example, Tiller if you're using Helm. So not everyone who just has network access against Tiller now has cluster admin because Tiller effectively needs cluster admin. So let's look at this um, for real a bit. Um, is this big enough or bigger? Bigger. Okay. Bigger. Big enough. Okay, so um, whew, I can't even see my window in Tmux anymore. Okay. Um, so uh, the very first, first thing that I want to start with is just a really simple one where I um, start a pod within my Kubernetes cluster that already has a role bound against it, um, which I can show here. So I have a role binding, a cluster role binding actually, because all non-resource URLs have to be, can only be specified in a cluster, your, a cluster role. Whereas um, things that are local to a um, namespace can be um, done in normal roles. Um, so yeah, we can see here that the uh, default service account in the default namespace has this metrics endpoint role bound to it. And that role, just to demonstrate what that looks like, is literally, it just says the non-resource URL is the slash metrics endpoint and an entity that has this role bound to it can perform the get verb on it. So, um, that's real big. So, um, I have this curl command, um, but I want to start with something else. So this is the one that should um, succeed, but I want to start with the um, non-happy case, for example. So here, I just um, requested just slash, right? Or can I also do uh, slash kinfolk? Uh, and I get forbidden, right? Um, but um, since um, this pod is running in the default namespace and just uses the default service account, which by the way, never bind anything to the default um, service account in the default namespace, very dangerous. Um, but this should now succeed, right? So if I uh, request slash metrics instead, I do actually get the metrics output from some sample application that I put in here. So cool, this works, right? That's really awesome. Um, but um, we saw there are also a couple of other authentication mechanisms um, in there. So I wanted to show one more, or actually two more. So I have uh, Dex as an entity provider. I think Dex was mentioned earlier. Awesome piece of software. Um, and Dex is just a, basically a federated identity provider for OIDC. OIDC is a standard on top of OAuth 2. So it actually standardizes the standard that was created to standardize something. Um, yeah, but this is, this is really cool um, because now we can use something that users can use. So for example, as I gave the example that Michael wants to access Prometheus, I don't have to give him um, a client certificate that is uh, valid for forever. Um, I can just add Michael's email, so Obviously, Michael's email is admin at password.example.com. Uh, and can log in, and we get um, forbidden. Why did we get forbidden now? Who paid attention? Right. So we actually requested slash, not slash metrics. So good thing is, again, everything 
works, um, hopefully works as intended. So if we now request slash metrics, we should again see our metrics, and we do. Um, great. So um, now the very last thing that I want to show uh, is something uh, that was actually just released yesterday, which is a rewrite feature. So um, what we saw earlier, um, where we only have a static configuration of which subject access review is issued when um, the kubeRBAC proxy is requested, um, the rewrite feature actually allows you to make this di somewhat dynamic so that you can say, for example, um, if I have a query parameter of namespace, then use that namespace query parameter in the subject access review request. And that way, for example, and this is what we use it for, you can use this to protect um, and limit the amount of metrics someone can see in Prometheus. So um, I'll show, I'll show a, a small architecture about this um, later, but I just wanted to show that this actually works. Um, no, I need to make this smaller because I, yeah, this is it. Delete that pod that we used and run another one. So um, just a very quick overview, um, but we'll talk about it, talk, talk through it a bit slower again. Um, the way this works is there's another proxy in between now. So there's the kube proxy, which um, rewrites based on the query parameter name, namespace the subject access review that we do for this. So um, then additionally, when I do a request against Prometheus in this case, and we can see this, this here, I'm using the query API of Prometheus to query the metric called container memory usage bytes. Um, and I wanna do this for everything, or I, I'm just requesting this for everything, right? And typically Prometheus would now give you the container uh, memory usage of all containers in your cluster, which is most likely not what you want in like a multi-tenant environment, for example, because then uh, team A can, or company A, can read metrics from company B, and that's obviously not what we want. So we built this thing, and it returns data. So that's, that's great, right? Um, but the more important thing is um, I only have a role bound to me that allows me to access metrics from the default namespace. And now, which namespace would we really want to see metrics from in Kubernetes? Yeah. But we can't, no. Yes, it works. Um, yeah, so uh, let's go back to the presentation to see a bit more about that. Um, or, yeah, we'll see about a bit more about that later, but there's one fundamental flaw about this, um, and if you've ever actually, like if you've dealt with um, token, token authentication before, you probably know about this problem, which is tokens are just plain text um, that Prometheus gives to some entity, a proxy in this case, and the proxy has the plain text token. So the proxy can take this token and pretend it's Prometheus and potentially um, escalate its, the privileges it has, right? And that's not a good thing. And that's why really, in the current state this is in, only secure things that already have higher privilege of things that are going to request it. Does that make sense? Um, so, and that's because, uh, or yeah, that, that, that's because otherwise it would be a privilege escalation. It was, it's actually the other way around that, or what I said. The people that request have to have a, no, sorry, I was right the first time. Um, yeah, so, but this is a general problem in Kubernetes because the exact same thing happens with the kubelet and sometimes even the API server and the kubelet are configured to do this, this dance and this is not what we want, right? Because if one kubelet is, um, um, an attacker get, gains access to one kubelet, it would have um, access to everything immediately. That's not something that we want. Um, so there's something that's called the uh, token request API that's go 
being implemented right now, where you can say, I want an additional token, but only for this audience. So in, the, in, the, in this case, what we would do is we would request a new token only to, requ to request metrics from Coop state metrics. Um, I'll be done soon. Um, yeah, and then the... Wouldn't you <coughs> request that from the identity provider? Yeah, um, the question was, um, would I not request this from the identity provider? What, what, what by, do you mean by this? Usually you tell the identity provider, I want to catch to this audience. Please give me a token that's valid for this audience. Yeah, th this, is a, this is exactly what happens. So Prometheus goes to the Kubernetes API and um, requests a new token only for Coop state metrics, and then Coop state metrics again validates was this token only for this audience? But technically, that um, that's only but that's not strictly. Is the identity provider, not Kubernetes API, right? Um, depends. So the question was: Dex is that Dex not the identity provider? In this case, uh, Kubernetes gives the identity because it's a service account token, right? Um, DEX could be an additional identity provider that you also give um, identities of DEX access to the Kubernetes cluster. Good question. Um, but yeah, in this way we can make sure that tokens can only be used for the thing that they're meant to be used and not that the proxy can go ahead and ask the Kubernetes API, hey, give me all this nice stuff that Prometheus is allowed to, uh, to request because the Kubernetes API then says, no, this was meant for, to be requested for you. So, yeah, this is basically kind of reinventing Kerberos. Um, um, yeah, so um, I have already mentioned the rewrite functionality and the, really the, um, it's super simple how to use this. You just add an additional entry in the config file and then you can use Go templates um, to configure this. And uh, most important about this for this to actually be secure is that when this is configured and no query parameter is given, that's a bad request because otherwise we would just let this through and give access to everything again. So, thought about that. Um, so yeah, really what this then creates is something that we kind of named soft tenancy for, for uh, Prometheus, for the Prometheus API and for the Federation endpoint if you're familiar with that. Um, yeah, but this is also only safe if users cannot configure what's being scraped because otherwise you can pollute the tenant uh, or other tenants, right? Because in Prometheus, labels are freeform, so someone could add additional labels um, and pollute other people's data. Um, so this is very specific use case. If this is what you wanna do or if you wanna use this, come talk to us and we'll see if this actually makes sense. Um, yeah. So uh, some future work that we want to do. Um, so the token uh, request API is not actually merged yet in Kubernetes, um, but as soon as that is merged, the second entry is what we uh, what we will use to, um, to request uh, to um, validate the audience um, on every request. And uh, something that we've also talked about is uh, right now the Coop RBAC proxy itself needs privileges to do um, the token, re token reviews and token uh, subject access reviews. And, and it, it, it would be nice if there could be some mechanisms where um, the Coop RBAC proxy wouldn't need anything, right? Um, kind of like if we use a PKI and say um, we just whitelist the entities that can access this because most likely um, Prometheus might be the only thing that ever accesses that. But again, this is the ki kind of use case where we need to see um, if that makes sense. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.